how did you end up in broadcasting? There wasn't any one magic moment. Um, I, I, I took an intro to mass communications course in college. And that led to an internship to find out if this TV thing was something he really wanted to do. His first job was as a photographer. But before long, he'd worked his way into a reporting position. Before I left Iowa, I got to cover the 1980 presidential caucuses. Uh, interviewed Ronald Reagan, interviewed Jerry Brown, covered Teddy Kennedy, uh, covered Jimmy Carter. Um, kind of got the bug, I think. You've talked to both Hillary and Trump. Tell me about that. I uh, interviewed Hillary twice back in 2008. She's not real accessible, I think, is, is the short answer. Uh, Donald Trump, on the other hand, granted me an interview a day before the Indiana primary this year. Uh, and, and in circumstances like that with a, a presidential candidate, uh, generally, uh, if you get an interview, you're granted three to five minutes of his time. Trump gave me 15. Um, very unusual. He must have liked your jokes. Uh, I, I think that you mean because I, I roasted him at the Indianapolis Press Club Gridiron Dinner 20 years ago. Um, I reminded him of that. Let me just close out here by explaining the haircut. It, it's simple, really. It's a comb over. <laughs> just, just look at it this way. This is how Dan Coates would look if he had a billion dollars. I don't think that he, he remembered that I was the guy. Well, 2016 is different um, in many ways. It, it, there's high interest and, and yet there's a high turnoff factor at the same time. 2008, when we had uh, the primary battle here between Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, and then Barack Obama won Indiana the first time that a Democrat had done that in 44 years, um, it, I think is it still may be uh, the most interesting election I've covered, but uh, this one is, is right there with it. What was Barack Obama like? I know you got to talk to him a little bit. Yeah, I, I interviewed him three times in, in 2008. and. Uh, Having interviewed a lot of presidential candidates, um, I can tell you that, that generally they don't answer the question you ask. They, they use it as a way to, to give their talking points. Um, Barack Obama answered questions. Um, he, uh, he was maybe the most interesting interview I've done with a presidential candidate. He, he actually uh, gave some thought to the question and, and gave real answers. When I first met you, you weren't always doing politics. I think people would be surprised to find that you were a regular at the Speedway. Oh, I, you know what? I grew up as a fan of the Indianapolis 500. Couldn't imagine that I would ever actually get to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And so when I got an opportunity to help out the sports department, I, I, I did so. I, I did interviews in the pits for 15 years. And then you were a bit of a race driver, as I remember. <laughs> I don't think, I, I don't think I, it qualifies as, as me being a race driver, but you, you and I did some reporting on the Skip Barber Driving School, and they, they let me get in a Formula Ford and go around the track. You've got a pretty good laugh and a pretty good sense of humor. How's that served you? <laughs> oh, I think it served me very well. I mean, I like to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I learned a long time ago, if you can walk into somebody's office and tell them a joke and make them laugh, uh, you got their attention, and then maybe you can go someplace else. I censor myself on a regular basis. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I do. The story that, that uh, I'm most proud of, I did on the, the day after George W. Bush held a rally at the state fairgrounds in 2003. We did a story about how people who were in the bleachers on stage behind him were asked to take their neckties off. We were able to establish that it, it was stagecraft. They, uh, if you get invited to, to stand behind the president, uh, you dress in your Sunday best. They, the president's people wanted these folks to look like regular people, so they asked them all to take their neckties off. And we, t we found a way to tell the story by showing uh, Brian Bosma, who was the pre-show MC, uh, was on stage in a necktie. Then he shook hands with the president without a necktie. Then we did a live interview with him immediately afterwards, and he had the necktie back on. 
we got a lot of national attention for that. It was the lead link on Drudge. It was the lead link on Rolling Stone. We got a million hits on our website in the early days of the internet. Well, you spent all this time around politics. You ever think about running for office? No. <laughs> I get asked that a lot. One of the reasons I've lasted at this uh, is because I'm not Republican, I'm not Democrat, I've never worked for a candidate. I don't have well thought out positions of my own on the issues. I examine other people's positions and tell people about it. What are you going to do after November? Don't really have any, any set plans. Uh, I'm going to rest for a while and uh, going to try to figure that out. I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm still young enough to work, uh, but probably don't want to work full time if I can avoid it. There are days in this business where you, you feel like you're performing a public service. Um, and, and it's a good feeling. And I'm going to miss that.